Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' H, and in today's episode of How It's Made, we're going to take a look at Gavin's truck. Gavin rang me up and asked if he could get a replica of one of their three 377 Peterbilts on their family farm in Hoxie, Kansas. Man, I tell you, I love this truck and I was eager to get on this because I've never done one quite like it, so I got to learn something new, and it's just really a neat old looking truck, and I am just grateful the way it turned out. To begin this project, you'll need a stock 377 by Gearbox. They are getting a little harder to find as Gearbox Manufacturing or Toy comp Company went out of business some years ago. And you can find these at toy shows and seems like I have good luck on eBay. Uh, these are very simple to take apart. There's only two screws that hold the cab to the frame. And then the windshield uh, pops in very easily. Uh, there's two rivets that hold the headlights, or excuse me, the cab lights in, and then the air horns pop out. Uh, grill, the headlights all pop out with just by uh, cutting away the mashed plastic on the back side, and then you can push them out really easily. The interior lifts out and is held in place by these two posts down here in the bottom of the die cast right there on the hood. So really simple trucks to take apart and frankly, I think they're a little underrated. Okay, so the hard work begins by taking a saw of some kind and cutting off these uh, skirts on the back side of the cab. So these were cut off and then the entire cab was sanded smooth and then these two holes filled in. The wind jammer up on top is hollow, which is really nice because now you can just come in and cut that along this line, uh, which is what I did. I cut this uh, flat from front back to front and then cut in front of the sleeper right here and then cut along the top of the roof cap here to get the entire uh, windbreaker off then use the file you can use a rotary sander or some sort of power tool or hand tool that it's your choice to uh, remove these any excess die cast so it's all smooth and even one thing I did come to uh, discover that the roof cap is does not match what you would see on an actual truck. So that's a this, this die cast roof cap here is not correct for a proper 377. So what I did was uh, I took this entire roof cap off following the line right above this door. So I used a sander, all of this came off, and then eventually this entire piece up here was hollow from here to here. So what I ended up doing after I did that, uh, well, getting ahead of myself. So this is now gone, sanded smooth, this is gone. And then finally, these fender skirts had to come off as well because the real truck doesn't have them. So following this line right below the sleeper and right below the door, cutting from back to front, um, this whole fender skirt comes off and then right behind this front fender right here, uh, also cut this down and then filed the lines smooth so that fender skirt is all gone and you're going to be able to see that here on the real or on the uh, replica in just a moment so that was all the major work to get that to get this truck to this po uh, point now on the model you can see here this roof cap does not uh, look anything like the former one and the reason for that is this is a roof cap off of a DCP 379 through 89 uh, model truck that I had in my parts bin uh, the only difference between the two different roof caps the 79 and 89 are these air horn holes are in different places so that's the only difference other than that they're interchangeable the one thing I did have to do to modify this roof cap to fit this truck better is there is a shim right here. You can kind of see a little faint line here. That is a plastic shim that I had glued to the back of this cab and then sanded down and then used body filler to sand it smooth. And then the goal here being to make this roof cap longer from back to front. The reason for that is I wanted the front of the roof cap to kind of stop right here at this burst hole for the mirror. And then what by doing that, left a huge gap back here. So to close that gap, that was the reason for the styrene and body filler. Just to make this longer so I didn't have that huge gap between the sleeper and the cap. So that solved that problem, which is really great. Uh, on the 
Front side of the sleeper though, there was an other hole there and before the roof cap had, was actually added on, I added styrene and body filler to uh, fill in a hole left from removing the die cast wind jammer or windbreaker. So that had to be done first and then we started fitting, I started fitting the uh, roof cap on. And that was accomplished just by uh, dry fitting it, taking it off, and just solving the puzzle until it looked the way I wanted it to. Reused the factory uh, windshield. What really came together so nicely was uh, there was some excess plastic from the previous uh, die cast cab that had to be shaved off and so cut that down without getting into the uh, outline here. You can see this kind of outline. There's one here at the top. So I took that plastic off to that outline and then fit that, glued it in place after dry fitting the visor on it to make sure everything would fit proper. So glued the windshield in and then the visor covers this seam in here perfectly. It's like it's made to be there. It, it just came together so nice. And then with this 379.89 visor uh, fitting up to this roof cap uh, just the way it's supposed to. This whole thing just looks so neat and clean right here. It's just really, really nice. Had some leftover air horns uh, from another project, so those went on in, up here on top. The exhaust is actually the factory exhaust left over from the gearbox casting, so that was reused. The original casting had two post mirrors, which wasn't going to work, as the real truck has four different posts on the mirror. Grab some out of the parts bin and then cut the back side of these down just a little bit so the uh, mirror wouldn't be tilted forward. It would be uh, level and flush the way it's supposed to. To attach the cab to the frame, this took a little bit more finagling. On the inside of the die cast, there is this uh, post right here where this screws to the frame of the original gearbox Peterbilt frame. This had to be cut out and then uh, shortened quite a bit so and and I couldn't tell you exactly how much I took out because I would remove some die cast I'd set it on the frame and when it looked like it was going to be level that's when I stopped and it would be different for every builder because uh, if you're not using a die cast promotions Peterbilt frame maybe use a different frame or you reuse the original frame which you could do uh, that's a possibility uh, they're all going to sit differently, so I can't tell you exactly how much to take out, but you will have to if you use die-cast promotions frame. So uh, that was done. Once I had that figured out, then uh, after the interior was installed, uh, then I could go ahead and put some shims to make the entire cab level on this frame, and then I used JB Quick and super glue to attach the cab to the frame so it doesn't come off. So it's just a matter of using different sizes of plastics underneath between the frame and the cab to get it uh, to set level on that frame. And I'm really pleased with how that came together here. These are 389.79 steps with a tank. The tank is actually black, so I painted that with a paint pen black and then attached them to the frame. These fuel tanks come off of some unknown project. Uh, it just came out of my parts bin. I don't even know what these came off of, but they uh, fit the truck really well and then they uh, fit underneath the sleeper the way the real ones do so I was pleased with that. This is a 379.89 exhaust that is designed originally this thing had plastic elbows in it that I couldn't reuse because they just wouldn't fit the exhaust and, and everything going underneath here so I had to modify this exhaust tubing quite a bit and then I used solder that I bent and then used as the pipe and elbow right there. These full fenders on the back were actually red uh, Peterbilt full fenders that I painted with Molotow Chrome through my airbrush. Uh, because the real one has aluminum style looking or maybe they're just not polished anymore, uh, full fenders, so those went on to replicate the full fenders. The wheels came from Canada Dakota and they match better the real wheels, the real wheels on the truck. Everything else is pretty much stock. The grill, headlights, that's all stock. The decals. So I guess I got ahead of myself and we didn't talk about the paint at all, but the paint, uh, I painted the whole thing white first, then I put uh, tape 
on top of the white. Then I shot white over top of the tape and that seals the tape so black doesn't run underneath and bleed underneath the tape. So it went white, tape, white, and then when the white was dry, then I shot black, then removed the tape, and then these are decals. My, I'm, I'm pretty good at taping and masking, but I'm not this good to do the fine stripes like this. So these are decals that are water slide along with the farm name, the number 15 on the sleeper and the 15 on the hood and the Peterbilt oval on the hood as well. Paint pen came in to make this little window here that exists on the real truck. And then a Molotow Chrome pen was used to make the Unibuilt sleeper icon stand out along with these two doors on the sleeper. And then they had clearance lights on top of the cab. You'll notice here that there's some JB Quick underneath to join the two frames. I had to cut out some of the frame. I was told that this is a 260 or 80 inch frame. Once I cut this down to 280, I thought that doesn't look quite right, and then cut it down to 260, it still didn't look quite right. So I took a little liberty and cut it down to, this is three and three quarter inches from the center of the front wheel to the center of the tandems. It's three and three quarter inches, which is 240 inches, which actually looks visually closer to uh, the real truck than uh, the measurements I was given. So I did take that liberty. Uh, frankly, I do think it looks a little bit better. The air horns came out of my parts bin. I cut them and then just laid them in here behind the sleeper. And then I'll stretch those out just a little bit more so they sit underneath this fifth wheel plate and they won't be out here all dangling like they are now. And that'll at least make it look, it'll give the appearance that those air horns go to a trailer once he uh, puts a trailer on it. And that is the transformation of a Gearbox 377 into Gavin's Family Farms 377 replica. Thanks for watching this episode of How It's Made. I hope you learned something new. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments. I'm glad to answer anything and help you along the way. Don't forget to take a look at the Diecast Lab. The Diecast Lab is the internet's only diecast trucking classroom. So subscribe to that and learn everything I know in easy to consume step-by-step -step tutorials along with other goodies that I've put there for you. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.